All right. Already? We head to the woods to get away from the office. But on the beach, just outside of Homer, it's all business. Brian Yulaski is in collections. The marine biology student recruited me to help pick rockweed with him as part of a project with the University of Alaska Fairbanks. We harvested six of these plots back in May, and today we're going to re-harvest three of them to see how much they've regrown in the past two months. The goal of this work is to find out if seaweed can be sustainably harvested in South Central Alaska. So we want to look at, is harvesting uh, detrimental to these local populations, or is harvesting for personal use really kind of this minor thing that we don't need to worry about, therefore influencing management decisions to maybe modify the current regulation that seaweed is illegal to harvest in non-subsistence areas. Yep, illegal. Probably not something most people think when they think seaweed. The restriction first went into effect about 15 years ago, when the Department of Fish and Game says there was a perceived over-harvest of rockweed in Seward. Everybody was like, whoa, we've got to do something about this, and proposals went before the Board of Fish, and that was when the regulations were put in place restricting the harvest of kelp. That's Glenn Hollowell. I manage commercial fisheries and subsistence fisheries here. He says seaweed provides shelter and food for a lot of animals in Cook Inlet. Fish and Game is lacking information needed to really manage seaweed harvesting, which is where UAF's College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences comes in. It could potentially tell us what could be sustainably harvested and what we might want to not harvest or only harvest at very low levels. Beaches such as this one could become popular places to collect seaweed, according to Ulaski. This summer, he's working to collect data as to when seaweed are reproductive in Alaska, the size most seaweed become reproductive, how much can be harvested while still sustaining local populations, and the rebound rates. From here, Ulaski gets on a boat and takes all the seaweed he's collected from sites around Kachmak Bay to a laboratory near Saldovia. This is where he really digs into the science, sifting through samples and looking for answers. Harvesting for local Alaskans is uh, part of you know, a lifestyle up here. So if we can contribute to making regulations that are kind of on par with you know, the community's interests, it, I think that would be a really good thing. Aquatic plants aren't a big part of Alaska mariculture just yet. But with more research, perhaps more people will turn to the sea and its weeds as a new frontier. For Harvesting Alaska, I'm Shannon Ballard.